Here. David Witham. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Paul Goodwin. Here. Paul Rebitus. Here. <coughs> At this time, I'd like to appoint Mr. Goodwin as a full voting member for the evening. First item is approval of the minutes of September 20, 2023. Anybody have a motion? Move to accept, Mr. Chair. Seconded. Made by Mr. Rebitus, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion? Mr. Belmore. And I apologize if, if I missed it, but I, I couldn't find, I, we had talked about them, come, uh, Firestone, I'm sorry, Firestone. We had talked to them about perhaps submitting a site plan amendment, uh, lifting the requirement of closing the back, back bay doors, because uh, it wasn't clear that there's any issue anymore. Um, and it, perhaps it was just city staff being uh, overly cautious, um, and they said they would consider it, but I thought it might be important to incorporate it into the minutes if it's not there. If I missed it, I apologize. So if we could incorporate that, that type of discussion that we had. Thank you. I'd so like that as amendment. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Witham. Second by Mr. Obitus. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Committee reports. You have a land use summary. Any comments on that? Seeing none, City Council report. Mr. Witham. Yes, I'll be brief. Uh, uh, just in the interest of transparency, uh, at this coming Monday night's meeting, I'll be introducing for a first reading a zoning ordinance uh, amendment change to reduce the size of the, of the Summersworth Historic District. Um, the intent is, at least in large part, to generate conversation. Uh, my view is to shrink the Historic District uh, about in half. It would maintain the Historic District uh, largely on the hill but would remove it from uh, other parts of the community, uh, say for a bit of the mill district that would remain in a historic mill district. So uh, that'll be introduced for first reading where it is an ordinance. Uh, it will then uh, need a public hearing at the following meeting, uh, maybe some committee assignment in between, uh, but just uh, that's percolating for lack of a better way to describe it. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Witham. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update, Mr. Richardson. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, at our last meeting, um, we were, I think we we're going to get a, Angie's here, so we're going to get a little bit of a, uh, the Summers Worth community profile that she's put together, and we talked about the, uh, the uh, MPO or the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which uh, essentially runs through the Stratford Regional Planning and digitizing the information from the various communities and making it available to the public uh, as is in our packet that Michelle provided for us tonight. So that was a good part of the discussion that was there. We also talked about the SEDS program uh, for economic development and that kind of thing and, and a similar type plan that the commission is working on. So, uh, and lastly, Again, with the with regional impact, we had an issue that came before us essentially from the town of Raymond, which is not in our district, but it had to do with uh, possible contamination of the Lamprey River in uh, the towns of uh, Nottingham, Northwood, Lee, and Durham, um, relevant to basically it's a it's a rock crushing operation that's been going on there for years but uh, has been on and off, and there was arsenic found uh, at 72 times the, allow the, allow the allowable level in one of their holding ponds that it's coming out of the rock, the granite, and whether or not that could be contaminating the drinking water of the downriver towns that I mentioned. And uh, basically, it was the recommendation of uh, uh, the Regional Planning Commission that they pretty much leave that issue to DES. The DES needs to do the adequate testing of the site and how uh, the runoff lands in the Lamprey River and what are the arsenic levels at that point. And whether it's a, none of the towns in the Regional Planning Commission asked themselves, asked, they all received notice and they, none of them asked for a review by the uh, uh, 
uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission as a, as a as a regional issue. They whatever they're doing, they've responded to uh, to Raymond, and it's been individually. So, but our only recommendation was to uh, let the uh, experts at DES handle with the arsenic issue. Good, thank you. So, with me, you have something to add? Yeah, back to the City Council report. I was remiss. I, I should have mentioned that at our past meeting, uh, the zoning ordinance amendment regarding uh, solar arrays uh, in the city was introduced uh, for first reading. Uh, this coming Monday night will be the second reading, and as part of that is the public hearing on that uh, zoning ordinance amendment regarding solar arrays here in the city. Uh, which speak to both roof mounted, ground mounted, and solar trackers. Um, as we know, it's worked its way through this uh, planning board level uh, over several meetings to fine tune the language. So, council will likely act on that this coming Monday night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 2030 committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have our first meeting since quarter two. It'll be next Wednesday at 3 p.m., so October 25th. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Belmore. Yeah, no report, just a request, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, item under new business C, uh, that should be very quick, I would hope and anticipate. I don't want to jinx us, but uh, perhaps you might consider, the board might consider moving it up and dispense with that. Uh, well, move it up at the beginning of new business? Or in, the beginning, business? in the beginning of new business, perhaps. Whatever you think is appropriate, actually, old business, right away or after old business. Thank you. Uh, at this time, would it be good to put it under old business because we haven't seen this item before? Before we get into the... Uh, put it no, put it under the first item under old business. I'd make a motion that agenda item C and a new business be moved to Agenda item A under old business. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? So next item, we'll get into old business. Uh, Craig Rialto is seeking a waiver of site plan review regulation requirement of section 13.1D for use of surety bond for to cover the site work bonding expense to construct a sports hub dome complex at a property located at 165 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District, Assessors Map 63, Lot 10, Site Number 04-2021. Mr. Ball? Michelle, have anything? Michelle, Public hearing. Michelle, do you have any? Uh, uh, the applicant is seeking to utilize a surety bond where the site plan review regulations require a letter of credit or a cash bond. Staff recommends that the board accept this application as complete and begin the review process. For a motion to make a motion to accept the application as complete. For motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Obitus. Discussion? All those in favor raise your right hand. Uh, excuse me, discussion, Ms. Belmore? No, I was just going to say that th this project has been before us uh, quite a few times, including asking for extensions. So it's an approved project that's that's been on the books for quite a while. Uh, they've come in for extensions, and uh, this is really just an administrative thing that we need to consider. Um, so that's all. I, I just wanted to clarify that for the, for the public and anybody in attendance. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the application, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Ball, I'd like to make your presentation. If you need just stay, uh, do you have the microphone on? Hmm. And just state your name and your affiliation. Thank you. Uh, James Ball. In affiliation with New England Sports Hub, and here that tonight with Luke uh, Fernandez, and I think Mr. Griato is shortly behind. As uh, Mr. Belmore said, uh, it's a, a performance surety bond that's uh, 
uh, like other bonds, just a different mechanism that wasn't in the regulations. And everything's lined up, as uh, Michelle was kind enough to say. Our uh, engineer and construction companies are, are working uh, these aspects as heading towards construction. It's been a long, patient road and COVID and economic times and financing's in place and uh, the patience has paid off with great efficiencies and looking to move forward. Uh, and we're just asking for the, uh, using the performance surety bond, which is cost effective for the client and effective for the community in the city because a contract is directly involved. So the bonding agent would hold him liable in the case something happened and we'd have to uh, go back and put the land in decent order so it wasn't a liability for anyone. It's simply that. Any questions, I'm, I'm here or Luke is here. All right, thank you. Thank you. This time I'll open the public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this application? Is there any uh, correspondence on this item? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. See, now close public hearing. Turn to questions from the board. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, not a question for the applicant, just a question for city, for city staff. Any concerns about this alternate method of bonding for this project? Uh, the city does not have concerns about this, and we're actually looking to update the site plan regulations. That's it. Okay. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, my understanding is that it's in our subdivision regulations that you could have this type of surety. So it makes sense to carry it over to site plan, and I'm in favor of the waiver. All right, thank you. Mr. Witham. Thank you to the applicant for helping us to identify a shortcoming in our site plan regulations. I suppose it is. And with that, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve uh, this with no conditions. Second. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Well, have a good night. Next item under old business, a continued item from September 20, 2023. Packies Investment LLC is seeking site plan and conditional use permit approval to construct 4,000 square foot mini warehouses, self-storage units, and 10 solar trackers with infrastructure on property located at 363 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District Assessors Map 48, Lot 22B, Site Number 15, 2022, CUP Number 14, 2022. Director Mayors, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, <coughs> this application was continued from the September meeting. Uh, the board was asking for a few items. We held a site walk today, uh, which uh, the board asked for the location and the height of the trackers. And uh, last month, the board also asked for a legal opinion uh, to determine whether the regulations within the solar ordinance and development apply to the proposed project. Uh, they actually don't. And the applicant is proposing to construct a 4,000 square foot new self storage unit and 10 48 panel solar trackers. Thank you. This time I'm looking for a motion to continue this item to this meeting. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I'd like to invite Mr. Bruton to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. My name is FX Bruton. I'm an attorney with Bruton and Barry in Dover, and my client has just walked in, Packy Campbell. Uh, I've been asked to come here because Bob Stoll was actually going to come and finish this presentation, but he's on vacation, so here I am. So, in any event, um, I think uh, uh, Michelle uh, indicated that uh, this uh, was continued only basically on a limited basis to do the site walk. I think they had the site walk. I wasn't there, but I did speak with uh, Packy, and I understand there was some sense of a discussion that he had um, some vegetation that was planned to go toward the back of the property and uh, his preference would to bring it up into the front. And so 
if that uh, was acceptable to this board. Uh, and I think there was some discussion about that uh, with members that it, it may be, uh, then he would like to do that. But other than that, there's no real uh, new issue, I think, uh, in terms of uh, the last meeting. And again, all three of the items that uh, this was continued for were um, taken care of. So basically we're asking for uh, approval of the project. And again, um, if there is any discussion with respect to moving that vegetation up uh, to the front, um, I'm sure Packy can uh, help me uh, with that discussion with this board. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Like open public hearing, anybody else care to comment on this application? Director Mayors, any correspondence? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Turn the questions on the board, Mr. Witham, then Mr. Berry. Thank you. Uh, let me first begin by saying I think the site walk was exactly what we needed for, for this uh, project. It helped me to put eyes on where the trackers would be located. Um, uh, thank you to the city manager for dialing up the fire chief while we were out there. One of my biggest concerns was access for fire apparatus and access for firefighting operations. Fires and self-storage units are not common, but they're not uncommon either, oddly enough. Um, the fire chief was able to allay my concerns uh, as he talked about the improvements to the drive down near the uh, rental property that's on site that's, that's going to widen that turn. Uh, he also spoke about some additional man gates that will be installed in the existing chain link fencing to allow for street access off of 108 or from the neighboring property. So uh, that helped me out uh, a great deal. Yeah, there was a lot of conversation about uh, landscaping. Uh, I think the uh, relocation of the landscaping from in back of the property where virtually no one would see it to the front of the property I think has a lot of value. The, I thank the applicant for his uh, approachability to that idea. I think that that uh, makes sense. Um, there was a lot of discussion about solar trackers, their size, and you know, is there a way to, uh, I'll use my term, hide them from the street. Uh, I, I, these are large. They're permitted currently. Uh, you're not going to hide them with uh, much of anything, right? And uh, I suppose the point was made out there that if you block them, you might also block the sun, which would make them ineffective. So I, I, I get that point uh, as well. So all that being said, I, I am good with uh, where we're at with this. I think the one issue that we perhaps do need to revisit tonight uh, that we raised at the last meeting with Mr. Stoll is that of the sidewalk. Uh, Mr. Stoll represented at the last meeting that uh, the Route 108 project uh, does not have a sidewalk plan for this section. Uh, State DOT held their public hearing he here in these chambers a couple of weeks ago and in fact there is sidewalk plan from the Dover line to the Rochester line uh, on that side of the road uh, and in fact at Interstate Drive there's contemplation of sidewalk on both sides up to uh, where Dunkin Donuts is because of uh, use demand there. So I think uh, with regard to the sidewalk waiver we at least have to have a meaningful discussion about uh, a uh, in-kind contribution to the city's uh, sidewalk uh, maintenance fund because as the state project goes, although the state will build it, it will then be the city's responsibility to maintain it. So I think we just need to have that, uh, that conversation as to whether we waive this outright or if there's some contribution to the city's sidewalk uh, maintenance fund or do we have them construct a sidewalk that will ultimately get torn up. So I think that's the only sticking point for this board member. Thank you. Mr. Barry and then Mr. Belmore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, I would, Council Witham stole a lot of my thunder, but uh, I, I thought that the site walk was really great today. I'm, I'm really glad we did it. You know, I've always stared at the property from, from, my, from my workplace, so it's nice to actually get there on site and see a little bit more up close what the applicant is proposing. Um, I'm happy that the conversation went well regarding the landscaping. And to be a little bit more specific, it was proposed to try lilacs as opposed to um, the proposed landscape that was on the landscape right. plan. So yeah. might need to discuss a little bit further what that will look like, how many you want to do. Is it on the street side of the fence? Is it on the inside of the fence? Um, I think that's worth a conversation. Yeah. Um, I mean, I... I'm willing to do either. I, I think in, 
inside the fence is the if you want to come up to the podium speaking Sorry. to the mic please um, i think that's a great question and i and i also really appreciate that, that we had a great site walk and that we were able to talk and look at stuff and and i really appreciate the common sense approach of are we going to cut trees down to put trees in um so and the, and the fact that down back there was like a lot of uh, trees existing where some plants were proposed and I'd like to move all of that up front where a they can act as some screening to the polls some screening to the, the project in general and uh, I have no preference I guess on the inside or the outside of the fence I just like to place them far enough away that I can still weed whack the fence and mow easily so I like to think about that when I landscape as well I think it's probably better to put them inside there's actually some existing landscaping trees on the inside of the fence, a couple of, of maple trees that I'm, I'm planning on keeping. And I would think that we can go left and right of that with a row of, of lilacs. So to the degree that we can say the plants that were proposed um, both down back and by the house, we'd put lilacs up on the project side of the fence. And, you know, how many I think I, I, I think is up to the, you know, four or five feet apart, whatever it takes to do that front fence line. So I mean, 20 plants, 25 plants, but I'm not, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to have a plant every five feet along that fence line and then maybe 10 feet away from that existing maple tree on either side so there's a little spacing for it to grow up. Um, typically when you plant lilacs, you plant them five feet apart and they will eventually grow into each other over time. We do plant a, typically they're 36 inches when they come from the nursery. Sometimes they're 32. I don't want anybody out there with a ruler or anything like that. They will grow. Um, I did recently, I think, 40 in Rochester, and I got four different nurseries in order to get 40 lilacs. So it's not it's it's a availability thing. So it might be spring next year by the time I can get those particular brand of plants. Um, but we will get it done before we get our final CO. And whether it's 20 or 30 or 40, it, it, it doesn't. Whatever it takes to screen that appropriately, I would make that deal. Thank you. And, and we appreciate you being amenable to that. You know, to me, it's, I get it. It's going to take a few years for those, for those plants to grow. But, you know, give it three, four years, and they will be beautiful. Because when, when, normally we always go with the same type of, of tree, same type of bush. You know, I, I threw arborvitae out there, and it's like, no. Oh. Um, I like the idea of the lilacs because I thought Rochester, right? We have that beautiful stretch of lilacs. It, it's going to look really great. Um, so it's nice to have something a little bit different. Plus, it will also distract the eye of your driver going down the street, too. So it's it's a nice change of pace, and thank you for bringing that forward. Um, as far as the rest of the site, I, I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. I, I like the design the, of the new buildings. Um, seems to be appropriate for the site, similar use. Um, and having spoken to you about the solar, you know, I did have uh, questions, why trackers? Why not go on the roof? Um, you explained that in very good detail why you want to go trackers. I found it appropriate once I was able to talk to you. Uh, so the site walk was definitely educational for me. So um, definitely helped me with my voting tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I'll be redundant but quick. I, I was going to point out that the applicant just pointed out that uh, the current landscaping plant would require you to cut trees so it just didn't make sense and then plant some uh, new landscaping so and I, th I threw out about 20 lilac bushes but um, it's great that he the way he presented uh, whatever it takes planting them the correct way so I would just uh, off I will eventually when as appropriate offer that change to the site plan uh, to swap the landscaping plan eliminate it where it's currently located and to plant the lilacs uh, to the satisfaction of the city. And of course we have uh, his comments on the record as far as whatever it takes, whether it's 19, 25, or whatever it is. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's perfect. So I'm good as long, as long as we can get the fire apparatus around and you get the, uh, the man gates to drag hose through and so forth. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robitus. No, Mr. I, I, just, I just wanted to comment. I think the applicant's um, suggestion to put those uh, bushes on the inside of the fence makes sense. If they're going to do major construction on 108 and those are on the outside of the fence, how many of those are going to be 
killed or disrupted with road work. So putting those on the inside of that makes perfect sense. But I think the site walk today, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if I'd have voted in favor of the project before the site walk. So I think that was important that we did that. And um, I'm in favor of the project. I'll be voting in favor this evening. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, one comment, one question. Um, the comment, I'd be fully in favor of those lags going on the inside of the fence beyond the DOT destroying them when they come through. Um, plants that are out towards a major roadway tend to be just Velcro for debris. Um, so getting those on the inside would actually improve the appearance. Um, just a question because I wasn't able to attend the site walk. I was in meetings pretty much straight up till 5 today. Um, the vegetation that you're talking about moving, um, those are not the ones that were part of the conservation discussion, the uh, blueberry and sweet fern, correct? Those are other landscaping plantings? Okay. Um, I would say I'm, I would ask to put all the plantings that are currently on the plan, including the ones from the Conservation Commission plan, because when we looked at that on the site walk, there's actually significant growth down there already in its brush growth. And the other concern that I brought up on the site walk and the concern that I have um, is that we're doing this maintenance plan with a brush hog, uh, probably on an excavator, not just mowing. And the, the point is you're cutting down low brush and a blueberry bush planted down there is gonna mix in with the low brush that's down there. And again, you're gonna be going into an area that has right now significant low brush growth already there on the edge of the wetland and then we're going to be maintaining that so i think there's a possibility that those plants would get wiped out in the future unless it was me saying for the love of god please don't cut that and i know what happens when i put a guy in an excavator it's going to get cut um, so i'd like to eliminate those in lieu of the lilac bushes and i forget how many they were i think it was 15 or 17 blueberry bushes and i i love blueberries i've planted a lot of those too. It's kind of blueberries and lilacs is what I do. Uh, but I don't think it would be appropriate down in that area. They would just get lost. And, uh, and I mean, to put it in perspective, I really don't care if that's what it takes to get the plan done tonight and keep Mr. Rhodes happy. Uh, a three gallon blueberry bush is $19. It's not a big deal. You plant them with a shovel. I just would like everyone to know that I go down there and do that I'm gonna go down there with a shovel I'm gonna plant 15 blueberry bushes and usually you have about a 20% failure rate just it's it's a it's considered a wetland bush and we're planting it along the edge of the wetland is what we proposed um, but as I did share tonight and I want to share with you because I want to be as transparent as I can I'm not planning at this moment in time to, to cut trees in the wetlands but to the degree that my solar production is down on the two trackers that are being shaded by those trees, I will exercise my legal right to give myself ambio and access to the sunlight, and I will cut those trees down, and they're in the wetland, so the jurisdiction is with the state, and as I have repeatedly provided information to the town, it, you don't even need a permit to do that. You, you just literally do best management practices, and you can cut trees down in wetlands, and I think there was just an incredible amount of misunderstanding on that issue when I said yeah I cut trees down wetlands all the time and you know I I felt like I needed to go to confession after that I don't know what I did wrong so um, so um, so that's kind of where we're at with the trees so the blueberries I am asking for that deal that we don't have to plant those blueberry bushes but again I, it's not a hill worth dying over yeah my concern with moving the blueberries and sweet fern up is that those are part of a habitat restoration plan for an area that was cut prior um, and I definitely don't want to dig up that particular grave. I'd prefer the shovel be used for plenty of blueberries in this case. Um, but the intent of having the sweet fern and blueberries back in that section was as part of a habitat restoration for that area. And one of the conditions that came through from conservation was for mowing and clearing back there uh, to be limited to pioneer species, things like the brush that you're talking about that's there now. Um, so my concern is that we'd be overriding a recommendation from conservation if we permitted those to be moved up and that was part of what I think was frankly an excellent habitat restoration plan that came through from you um, so I again I, I I have been part of wetlands restoration plans having purchased properties that had prior um, wetlands damage knowing there was damage there and then done the restoration plan um, bought a parcel in the city of Rochester where they had done a water line and gone through two wetlands but anyways um, I would say to you that that is a request on my behalf to modify that report slightly 
and I hope that the board will do that. And I think that when we talk about not to get into the minutia of this, the, you don't do restoration plans in upland areas, okay? And I appreciate that the CONCON came along to give me a favorable representation. I would just say to you that I've never heard of that in state law or in this. We're not repairing a damaged wetlands. There were no wetlands impacts done. There was a timber harvest done in an upland area that I fully believed was my legal right uh, to cut trees on property that I own. I still think there's some serious, significant concerns with having essentially a conservation easement that's 100 feet wide along all the wetlands in Summersworth without compensating any landover for that easement. The Conservation Commission, I've done a lot of conservation stuff. They do a great job. Their job is to go out and get conservation easements. Somehow in the city of Summersworth, they've created a conservation easement 50 feet wide, some argue even 150 feet wide, although it's not in your ordinance, along every wetlands in the city of Summersworth. I, I just ad admittedly have a problem with that. But for tonight, does this board think that you're supposed to do restoration plans in uplands? Or would you say, hey, Conservation Commission, this is this board. What's the, what's the legal remedy? What can a town require someone to do in an upland? Again, don't mind. We want the blueberries. We're moving on. I don't want to do that. You can go with Mr. Rhodes' recommendation. It would mean a lot to me if this board modified what was six trips to a conservation commission, what has been over a year-long process, what was a prior not even accepting an application as complete. So this has been a long road. And I, I think we've made some compromises and we've done some things right here. We eliminated two trackers. We moved the, the buildings up to the top level instead of the bottom level at the request of the Conservation Commission. We lessened the impact by over 90% in the buffer area for impervious surface. So I mean, at some point, it's just I want everyone to know I'm a reasonable guy. I've done a lot of reasonable things here and we're still not happy. <laughs> Dr. Mears. Mr. Rhodes, did you have any more comment? I just uh, handed Jeremy the, the landscape plan and uh, at the site walk it was discussed the corner of the lot by the residential unit swapping that area. Uh, I think it's sheet L1. All set? Yep. Mr. Witham. Thank you. Uh, as I often have to do, I have to lean on other board members when it comes to some of the CONCOM stuff and wetland buffers and all of that. Uh, I've learned more here just tonight about blueberry bushes and arborvitaes. And I, truth be told, I have never picked a berry off a bush. I've never picked an apple off a tree. I don't know if I should live in New Hampshire, but I've never done those things. So I'm tapping out. That conversation was way over my head. So uh, I'll lean on others to help guide me in my decisions uh, on that here tonight. I've never done that. I, I don't see the need. Uh, uh, the, the only other thing to, to bring up, and again, uh, again, uh, other than the sidewalk conversation, um, I know we didn't take note of the, 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 the rental property there, the resident was parked in what will be in pretty close to the access drive. Um, I, 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 I agree with the applicant. We talked about it on the site walk. You know, if you put up a no parking sign or a sign that says park here, who's going to enforce that? Uh, I think it's just merely uh, communication with your property owner there about uh, making sure that access is maintained. And I'd be happy with sort of that. And we don't even have to memorialize that as a condition. But uh, I think the applicant knows for people to use the storage facilities need to get to them. So uh, it'll police itself, I suspect. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Director Mears, would you like to review the conditions of approval? There's uh, a number of other conditions and regional impact at first. Contain a motion for regional impact. I move that the, uh, uh, that the project does not have any regional impact potential. Second. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. 
There's uh, a number of well, one waiver request. Uh, there's a number of waiver requests, Mr. Chairman. One, two, three, three waiver requests. Mr. Robitis, one question: Are we, as the planning board, I don't know if we have the ability to cut a deal, so to speak, with what the CONCOM required. If the CONCOM said that this has to happen, then does that have to happen? This is a separate. We took the vegetation or the plantings and our of what we approved, and you know we've made that swap, and that that I'm happy with that. But I don't know if we have the ability to do that. Yeah. Mr. Belmore, you have it. Yeah, it's answer. just a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. We can accept part of the recommendation or all the recommendation or add additional recommendations or okay. submit our own recommendations. I did want to point out the CONCOM isn't asking to put blueberry bushes in the sweet fern instead of blueberry bushes, right? So we were submitted a uh, restoration plan, landscape plan by the applicant that included a run of blueberry bushes at the uh, back of the property um, along the edge of the wetland that had been previously cut. Um, there was a, a recommendation from a couple of folks on CONCOM to replace some of those with sweet fern because they were going into an area where blueberries wouldn't live. Um, and the applicant had been amenable to that at the time. So the condition, the, the staff recommendation needs to be changed. It's, it, it, I don't think it lines up with what you just said. So I think we've had a replaced landscaping plan that did not match with the, re the recommendation from the CONCOM. Talk about the conditional uh, use per approval. It says that the three northernmost and five southernmost blueberry bushes are replaced by sweet fern. Yes. That's not all of them, that's some of them. Yeah, I think there were about 20 all told and some So the, did you recommend they also plant blueberry bushes or just leave the ones there alone? So there's a, there was a ring, or not a ring, but a line of 20 plantings that the applicant had proposed, roughly 20, I believe that was the number. Um, a subset of those were in areas where blueberries would be unlikely to survive, sweet fern would be. The recommendation from CONCOM was to replace part of that set of proposed blueberries with sweet ferns, retain the other plantings as blueberries. So looking at the, the landscape plan, I believe you can see just part of that run near the wetlands on the back of that where those have been proposed the full span of that is not shown in the landscape plan is submitted in this packet Director Mayors? Uh, we did send this to uh, Scott O uh, the conditions for CUP uh, because there were some that were missed at that meeting so he has reviewed these as the chairperson Any further questions from the board? Okay, first, a uh, waiver request for vehicular circulation and parking. Mr. Chairman. Pertains traffic impact, pedestrian, bicycle, and transit amenities, bike rack. Mr. Horton. I move that the request of Packies Investment LLC for the waiver from Section 124D, 62A, requiring the installation of a bike rack be approved. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Horton, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. I'll Second waiver of vehicular circulation, parking, traffic impact analysis. Anybody have a motion? Mr. Witham. Thank you. I move that the request of Packies Investment LLC for a waiver from Section 12.4D requirement for a traffic, a waiver for a traffic impact analysis be approved. Motion made by Mr. Second. Witham. Second by Mr. Obitis. Discussion? All those in favor of the waiver, raise your right hand. Opposed? Ms. Horton, will you? Uh, I, I, um, approve the I waiver? Can, I approve. Yes, sorry. Motion passes. Waiver is granted. And uh, entertain a motion for the third waiver. 
streets, driveways, sidewalks. Mr. Orton? I move that the request of Packies Investment LLC for the waiver from Section 125C for the requirement to install sidewalks be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. Mr. Boytham. Yes, yeah, just uh, kind of curious for the applicant's response of uh, in kind donation to the city's uh, capital reserve fund for sidewalk maintenance. Uh, if the applicant is amenable to that, I would just point out to the board that we have been uh, kind of consistent in the Route 108 corridor, uh, Cumberland Farms project, that by way of an example, we did that, uh, and seemingly another one uh, that we had out on the Route 108 corridor uh, that we've done this. So I'm just trying to be consistent in our practice. Mr. Bomo. And just uh, to further that discussion, it's sidewalk maintenance, which would include uh, perhaps putting this money towards uh, a sidewalk tractor correct um that we'll have to uh, add an additional one once sidewalks are built out there so mr witham is requesting a condition to the waiver yeah i'm not quite sure how to phrase it uh for some other projects we've had uh either the applicant city staff both kind of agree on sort of what the cost of construction of a sidewalk would be and then we've back that down a bit to come up with a number but I don't know how we go about that um, I could move this forward with you know uh, uh, donation that the applicant makes if that seems reasonable or if the applicant isn't willing to do that then I guess that opens it up to further discussion would you care for input from mr. Bruton mr. Bruton <laughs> Only when you're here, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Oh, I don't either. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure what the request is in terms of money, um, and I think that's helpful, but it's not really consistent with what we expect because self-storage, you don't usually see people walking down the sidewalk with storage stuff, and that kind of thing is, you know, if this place kind of requires that, we have to... You know, have to consider that and we don't really we're not in that situation I think it, particularly in this case I mean I think and I did the Cumberland Farms so yeah we understood that that people would walk to Cumberland Farms because it's a convenience store and all that so it's pretty low in terms of how it could pass just kind of the general test so I really don't you know with that said I mean you know my client wants to obviously get approval and he'd wants to work with the board and all that et cetera, et cetera. we all you know I think you can see that but I just don't know what the magnitude of that could even be and um, you know paying towards a whole new tractor for something that doesn't generate sidewalk use probably doesn't necessarily seem fair to us but trying to yeah and I, I you uh, to be frank, you make a reasonable argument there, and we're certainly not asking you to buy a new tractor. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I know. They're a quarter million dollars, so no. <laughs> that's easy. Uh, uh, so I think that's an easy <laughs> no. Um, you make a reasonable argument. Uh, uh, as as the property owner said on blueberry bushes, he's not going to die on that hill. I'm not going to die on this one. That's a reasonable argument unless the board sways me otherwise. And we appreciate Mr. Goodwin. that. Oh, sorry, uh, I, I, I don't. I, all I'm saying is we we understand and we appreciate it, and we just don't know how to respond otherwise. And so we're saying it with re due respect, obviously. Mr. Goodwin, there's not currently a sidewalk, right? No. Right. So this is the waiver for no. not installing one. I wonder. This is more of an internal comment. Um, if this is a waiver which we apply regularly, which I think we do. Maybe there's a way in which we can revise the regulations such that we have, the board has a structured system. If, if waiving the sidewalk requirement, there's a per linear foot contribution that is required or something like that. So we don't have to, because I feel like every time we have this discussion, this exact thing comes up and it's very like, oh, what did we do last time? How do we say this? And it's just like, well, why don't we just make a, a formula? A thought. That would Anyways. alleviate discussions <laughs> yes I, I i i love that 
thought, quite frankly. I think it's a good one. Um, you know, I think the, the, the curveball here, uh, past projects, you know, we had the city engineer kind of thumb out uh, a reasonable estimate as to what the cost of a sidewalk would be from a negotiation perspective. This came up late in the game because even I was under the impression the state wasn't going to put the sidewalk up that far, but that's changed now. But again, I think uh, the applicant makes a reasonable argument that this is going to generate virtually zero pedestrian traffic. I think it's a reasonable argument as opposed to the Cumberland Farms project by way of example. So uh, I, th I think I've moved my needle more in the direction of approving this waiver. Further discussion, Mr. Belmore? No, I, I was just going to mention um, I'm in favor of the waiver without a, any uh, contribution discussion. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Okay, at this time, I'd like to ask Director Mears to review the conditions. Plan revisions, please list all waivers granted on the plan that the three northernmost and five southernmost blueberry bushes are replaced by sweet fern. Please list all conditional use per uh, permit conditions on the plan that uh, landscaping is replaced to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Instead of replaced, relocated? Relocated, yeah, sorry. Um, and modified, I guess, modified. too, right? Modified. Right. Uh, conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work, construction estimate, building plans sh shall bear the stamp of a certified pr fire protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection, fire alarm monitoring, reporting, fire suppression systems, and any other fire protection or life safety systems as required by national or New Hampshire code. Uh, also included with that, which wasn't included in this, was the three main uh, gates as required by the fire chief or man Amazing. gates sorry <laughs> all right thank you for the correction a pre-construction meeting is required an escrow account and the amount set by the city's uh, contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Service will be established a performance surety in the amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services but no less than 25 percent of the cost of site construction um, New water and sewer connection permit erosion controls shall be properly installed. Wetlands buffer areas shall not be impacted by any construction activities other than those impacted permitted under the CUP and DES wetlands permit. Uh, landscaping surety, stormwater management and erosion control plan shall submit relevant pollutant accounting information to the Director of Planning and Community Development as required by the Public Works Director relevant to pollutant tracking information and shall be submitted prior to holding the pre-construction meeting. Uh, and then it's all the other standard conditions applicable during and after construction and as-built plans as well. Okay, thank you. Before we question vote on, on the site oh. plan, we're going to be voting on the conditional use permit. Just a question on one of the, the yep. conditions uh, the, with regard to the fire department man gates because we talked about it on site uh, with locking to the satisfaction of the fire chief because I think there were a couple of alternatives thrown around out there. So if that could just be added into that condition if there's no objection. Thank you much. First, we'll be looking for a motion on the uh, conditional use permit. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Rabidus. Second. Second by Mr. Witham. Discussion. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, preface this by saying I'm not necessarily looking to die on this hill. I'm just looking to see if I need to find some cover with good sight lines. Um, Director Mears, you had mentioned that you had brought the updated landscaping plan to the chair of the Conservation Commission for review. Not the updated landscaping plan. The conditions that were approved at or the revised report with the conditions approved with the CUP. Okay. So there hasn't been any Conservation Commission review of the new landscaping and the changes that the applicants made to that since that was approved, correct? Correct. We're waiting until we get the revisions. And typically that happens after okay. final approval as, as part of the final plans. All right. Thank you. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Conditional use permit. Yeah. CP approval. First staff. Just for the NOD. Any further discussion? Are we approving something that's been recommended by the CONCOM yet, or are we got the cart ahead of the horse here? From my understanding, we're approving the CP, but not the landscape plan yet. That would be part of a final plan approval. Is that correct? Any further discussion? This, this is the final approval. Yeah, I'm confused. I'm still <laughs> confused. <laughs> this so I'll, I'll, I'll just not vote. <laughs> I'm staying. I don't know what we're voting for. For okay. approval of the site plan. No, right now this is conditional use permit. It's on here, but there's no motion. And that's why I read from the condi the, the rec recommendations don't reflect what, the, what I heard. There's no blueberry bushes in the recommendation. Unless I got a, the wrong paperwork. Number two doesn't talk about blueberry bushes. I don't know what we're, we're approving. Uh, it says, please list all conditional use permit conditions on the plan as part of final approval under plan revisions. Yeah, the, but as it, far as I see, there's no vote on a conditional use permit here. There's a comment about it that's sort of in the same paragraph as the sidewalk waiver, so it's poorly laid out, but I'm confused too. I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm looking on page four on the bottom. Page four, halfway down. Is the motion for the conditional use permit, right? That's what we're voting on right now. Oh, that was for the sidewalk. No, that's conditional use permit. I got ahead, of, my, I got ahead of myself and had her read the conditions of approval for the site plan. We've always voted on a CUP separately than the site plan. Agreed. I don't re ever recall incorporating it to a site plan. Staff may have missed that motion. Um, do you want me to? Say it out. <laughs> so currently we have a motion for the conditional use permit. That's been seconded. What are the conditions? The conditions are listed. It says conditional use permit. And then it's 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 reincorporated into plan revision. So it's here, it just doesn't have a motion. Yes. But I don't understand number two. It doesn't talk about blueberry bushes. If I could pop in here. Um, at Conservation Commission, when we reviewed this request, there was a landscaping plan presented to us that included a line of blueberry bushes and, per our revision there, sweet fern, um, at the edge of the previously cut wetland. That was what's referred to in the second of the conditions that were recommended by the CONCOM. Um, that landscaping plan, I've, I've just gotten a look at that piece tonight, but doesn't appear that that landscaping plan was ever submitted as part of the final plans. So that's where our disconnect lies. This reference is a landscape plan that's not in the final submitted package. Can I just clarify that? That's because that's as part of the planning board. It's not part of the conditional use permit for the CONCOM to look at. So that's a separate because it didn't impact the wetlands buffer. The plantings didn't? Those plantings that are, that are on the corner of the lot. Right, but not the ones that are referred to here. No, those are the conditions from the uh, Conservation Commission meeting. So... The items that are referred to as part of the conditional use permit weren't included on the piece that's in front of us tonight. They were included on conservation materials that haven't made it to this point. Ms. Belmore. I'm going to make a motion for the sake of discussion and see where it goes. There's a section in the middle of page four that speaks to a request for a conditional use permit for a 100 square foot impact for a proposed storage building 
2,860 square feet impact for site grading, stormwater management, and 21,490 square foot impact for tree clearing and solar array construction within the riparian wetland buffer as part of a commercial development. Conservation Commission reviewed the CUP on August 9th, 2023 and September 13th, 2023, recommending the following conditions. I assume recommending approval with the following conditions. Uh, one, that the successful establishment of seed mix be re-evaluated annually by a landscape engineer slash botanist until fully established. Two, that the three northernmost and five southernmost blueberry bushes are replaced by sweet fern. Three, no mowing or cutting to take place with the exception of pioneer species not included in the plans. And four, site prep limited to raking and seeding per expert recommendation. And I'll make a motion to approve it with those conditions for the sake of discussion and trying to get this moved forward. Okay, motion reiterated by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. Mr. Wortham. Thank you to the Richardson. city manager for kind of walking us through that and for everybody for walking us through that. I will support this motion for the CUP. I've generally understood in my life that blueberries are good for you, although tonight they're giving me a headache. <laughs> Mr. Richardson. Yeah, I mean, th this is referencing eight plants. How many plants are there all together there? I mean, in the plan that was submitted to us on conservation, that? there were approximately 19. 20. There were 19. 19. Okay. So what's, uh, what's then going to happen to the other 11? They're going to remain blueberry bushes. They're going to stay there. We'll do 11 blueberry bushes now. Yeah. And five sweet ferns. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Well, that. Really didn't have that okay. Idea. And I and I would I would I would I would also gingerly point out there's probably a few hundred sweet ferns growing down there right now. So the we're ferns have come back. They do grow you well down there. Should really step up to the mic. So because there's no mention, because there's no mention of those eleven, they're going to remain. And this is simply saying that those that are placed in the, the northernmost and the are going to be replaced by the sweet fern. And to me, that's pretty simple. Mr. Belmore? Well, I'm good. <laughs> Mr. Rhodes? In, in an effort to get this closed out, um, the applicant had submitted materials to the Conservation Commission that included a really well-constructed seed mix to restore this habitat, included these plantings as a component of that restoration effort. I think the general consensus on the CONCOM was that it was a very well-designed plan, very well thought out. and what we want to have happen here from putting on that head again briefly was just for the applicant to do what he had suggested in that meeting and that's what that CUP reflects so I'd be fully in support of approving that any further discussion all those in favor raise your right hand oppose conditional use permit passes wow. entertain a site plan motion Mr. Horton. I move that the request of Paggy's Investment LLC for the site plan approval to construct 4,000 square foot mini warehouse and 10 solar trackers with infrastructure be approved with the conditions stated here tonight in the director's memo. Motion made by Mr. Horton, Second. seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Site plan is approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I get the next case. <laughs> That's it? I have the next case. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we move an item on the agenda? Can we move an item on the agenda, Mr. Chairman? We're going to Butternut. Sure. 4B. We're going to Butternut. <laughs> 4B. Could we move that up? Um, because FX is representing. Item agenda four B so moved. Up to second. the beginning. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Hawkins Family Revocable Trust is seeking a conditional use permit for the commercial residential use on property located at 5 Main Street in the business B 
with form-based codes overlay district assessors map 11 lot 210 CUP number 05 2023 director Mayers. yes the applicant has requested to uh, continue this application to December 20th to provide a site plan for this project thank you very much uh, is that this December did you say December 20th yes oh, okay. yeah uh, yeah, FX Bruton with Bruton and Barbie for the applicant. We're really excited about the project, but um, all the engineers are busy, so we can't get our plans together. To, so that's why we're asking for the continuance, and then we're going to come back in December and hopefully have everything in front of you. Okay, so it need, needs to be a motion by the board. Contain motion, Mr. Witham. I'd move that the application be continued until the December. The December meeting is the request. 20, yeah. December 20. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you very much. Opposed? Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, housing workshop with Stratford, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Director Mayors. Yes, so we have Angie here tonight to help. Uh, she's been working with us on our uh, housing chapter, uh, so she has a little presentation to give. Uh, she's a principal planner with Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Good evening. How are, how is everybody? Does anybody need a break? <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope this comes down. Right awesome, thank you so much. Oh, there we go. I have my heels on, so I need to put this up. <laughs> All right, so I have not had the pleasure of meeting some of you, but I have others who are commissioners, and I've heard of actually some of the folks in this room, so it's good to finally put faces to names and, uh, and see others in person again. So Angela Cleveland, I do work for the Stratford Regional Planning Commission as a principal planner, uh, and the, I have, do have the great pleasure of working with Michelle and her team uh, as the project manager to specifically for this piece of the master plan so the city was given a grant uh, from the state um, through the invest new hampshire uh, program uh, they call it the housing opportunities program grant and this is to fund both the development of your plan for the city for the housing for housing specifically as well as to audit your regulations so i'm taking note of some of the things that you're talking about today regarding sidewalks and setbacks and other things so uh, with that in mind, we've done quite a few things to, to build up to this. So the first was to do a survey, um, which I'm going to go over some of the recommendations or I should say results from that tonight. Uh, we also had a workshop, which I saw some of you there. So that's, that's great to also, again, put faces to names. And obviously our commissioners were there. Bob, uh, Mike Babinski is going to be watching this at home. Hello, Mike. Um, so it's great to, to see um, all of you as far as, you know, how you relate to housing here tonight, and hopefully we'll have a great discussion. I don't wanna be the only one talking tonight, but I do, obviously, some of it I will be, and then the rest of it, hopefully we'll have an open discussion about the audit. Um, the audit is the second part, as I mentioned, so looking at your regulations, um, as well as site plan and, and subdivision, we're looking at, at the ordinances. So uh, we, this is, I think, our first one, second one in the in the region. It's a relatively new exercise. I wouldn't say in whole, but as far as how it's going to be conducted, um, the state's still kind of figuring out what we want to look at with our audit recommendations and, and the overview. So this is the third one. We'll be doing one in Summersworth. We'll also be doing... Um, we're doing one in framing excuse me in um, farmington right now i was in massachusetts most recently so apologies if some of the massachusetts communities come out um, and then we'll also be doing new durham so have some good communities um, as well as uh, cities versus towns uh, experience with this all right so we had a great housing workshop it was amazing the amount of both the feedback we had some great participants it was a great mix of homeowners renters uh elected officials uh your staff members not just the planning staff but mike babinski was there your city manager was there uh, board members from planning and zoning um, and i believe conservation commission as well uh, real real estate agents obviously our commissioners and developers and we had three breakout groups with a lot of really good conversation about a variety of things. I would say the hot topics were accessory dwelling units, ADUs, 
um, promoting what you're doing here in the city. You know, uh, there, were, there was a conversation in the work in the breakout group that I was in with Michelle where we were talking about your complete streets work. We were talking about a couple of developments, new zoning or updates to your zoning, and people were not aware of those things. Even uh, one of the main pe I won't put, name any names, but someone who really should be a promote, you know, knowing this stuff on behalf of the city. So uh, we're talking about how to do that, you know, how to tell your story and celebrate your successes. So I think that's a, a big takeaway, not just for the housing chapter, but in general for the city. Uh, development along route, route 108, which I took a great housing tour with the planning staff today to see what that could look like and where that might look like, as, as, and, uh, as well as along Blackwater Road. Uh, some frustrations a little bit with the historic district standards, but you know, so that'll be part of our audit um, most likely, and you know, just to see where that might be causing some pain points, and then um, affordable housing, obviously. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> that was like really one of the bigger things, and one of the things that the state is hoping that all of us can address um, in our communities is affordable housing. So the survey was conducted back in July, and it was a rather long survey, I'm not going to lie, but we did this because we really wanted to dive into not just the issues related to housing and how people relate to housing, again, what their pain points are, why they stay in Summersworth, but also really understanding who's taking these surveys. Because, and we, we actually did this back and forth for almost a month with both um, Chris and Mark and Mike Babinski, as well as the planning staff, we wanted to make sure that we were getting to the root of who's in Summersworth. So, um, you know, we did a good a mix, I would say, you know, we, we did catch some of the ages, a, a pretty good mix, like over half is in that 35 to 64. So it's not necessarily on the older end, it's not necessarily on the younger end, it's really your middle and not just your average age either. Um, we had a lot of folks who have no dependents living at home, over half of the folks. So that does seem a little bit high. Um, so we did try to, to gear this more to families, but it was in the summer, so it was a little bit challenging. School's not in. Um, higher than normal number of people with disabilities participated in this survey. I think you're around 14%. Um, in the region, it's about, four, about, that, about that too, about 15%. So higher than normal, um, which we appreciate hearing that perspective because we need accessible housing. We need housing that people can age in place. Um, people are in this, unfortunately, um, are telling us that they're spending more than 30%, um, over half of the respondents on income on housing. And this is both renters and owners. So it's not just the renters, which is what we see where, where most of the burden is. Um, and we also see a lot of people who have, been, have lived here a long time. Over half of the people had lived here over 10 years. Uh, also great. While we also want to see the younger, you know, not younger, but people who hadn't been here as long, it's also great to see folks who really are have, you know, basically call this home. Um, we also saw that a lot of folks um, have been living here because of family, and we'll talk about that in the survey as well, but I did want to mention that. And then almost a quarter are living in multifamily and attached ADUs. While some of those are ownership, obviously not the ADUs, but the multifamily and the condos, it is nice to see again that mix. So I wanted to create some bar charts with this instead of just percentages so you could see the full breadth of what we're looking at here. And what I took away from this is that people are really looking at, uh, the green is, is high, so they, they, people, they prioritize when they choose a, a neighborhood to live in, the green is where, what they pay the most attention to. So proximity to amenities, uh, obviously in their price range, I think that's a really big no-brainer, no but it was, you know, it's really up there. Uh, not many people were neutral on that. Safety and access to utilities and infrastructure. And that also meant sidewalks, by the way. So I, I took out a lot of the wording because I already think this is too wordy. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's tough to show you in a bar chart without too many words. Um, you know, they, I was surprised to not see public transportation, although I guess, you know, it's not as big in this region yet. And I know Coast is making a big effort and I see lots of signs everywhere. So at some point I'd love to see that go up. Um, and then size of unit was also one where the neutral was actually higher than, this, than the high priority. So, you know, it's not, we're not always looking for big houses these days. So I think that those are really important things to think about when we, we have takeaways. And I want to mention, and I'll, I maybe sound like a broken record to our team here, but we used a lot of these to create um, the, the workshop. You know, we created the workshop around what we were hearing from the survey, and then we'll then blend that into the final chapter as well. And I am looking at time because I know I only have 45 minutes today. Um, so the type of housing units that people feel are needed here in Summersworth, moderate income was the highest of all of those. And then we did see still a spike in rental housing, senior housing, accessible, but I loved the end. 
not only was the, it a tie for agree and neutral, but a lot of folks still are, don't know if you need them because they're not sure what accessor accessory dwelling units are. And so we actually started on, on um, Summersworth behalf and actually will hopefully use this for the rest of the region, kind of a little cheat sheet on what ADUs are and try to work with you that one of the outcomes that I loved from our, our breakout group was trying to do more workshops or some sort, you know, gatherings, if you will, trainings on what some of these term, terms mean. And, and Mark, I know you, you beat on this drum quite a bit, is you know, really educating people what the difference between low income, moderate income, you know, what does that mean for accessibility for, you know, in someone's price range? You know, let's define that stuff so that we can remove some of the barriers around, um, around those moving into our neighborhoods. And then some of the challenges that folks felt um, are really are facing the, the summer's worth right now are, you know, you, we're seeing kind of the same types of things. So the cost, um, neighborhood safety. So as you saw earlier in the, in the slides, that is one of the main things that people look at when they're choosing a neighborhood. Um, it was higher than, than I've seen some communities be. Um, housing type, so that's also encouraging, and also some again where we need to be describing what an ADU is, you know, what uh, workforce housing is before we start to introduce those terms too much. Let's, what does it mean? And stick with that definition. And then unkempt or vacant homes, which was interesting. Folks didn't feel like their homes needed to be repaired, but they felt that there were a lot of folks, that, a lot of places that needed repair in Summersworth. So that was interesting as well. And then our last one, before we move on to the housing audit discussion tonight, is that um, people felt that the, that, that the ability for residents to remain in Summersworth, which is important, you know, we want, we want to retain folks. Um, the cost, again, no-brainers no, no there. Um, supply and quality, again, that supply thing, I'm sorry, the quality thing again, you know, around unkempt houses and slumlords, I hate to use that term, but, you know, absentee lord, landlords. <laughs> Um, the location, again, so that around the safety, um, but also accessibility to, uh, uh, you know, resources, to infrastructure, and then that they don't feel like they have a choice to leave. Again, a lot of folks are here, I wouldn't say half, but like about a third of the folks who responded are here because they bought their home through a family, their family is here and they wanted to be closer to them. Um, they bought it from a friend uh, or they, they inherited it. And I, that was, again, you know, doing these surveys for 20 plus years now, I, thought, I felt like it was a lot higher um, in Summersworth than I've seen in some others of why they live here or why they, they moved here. So very interesting stuff. Any comments on these? And I'm happy to forward all this data too. Uh, there's no names associated with this. This is anonymous. But if anyone's interested in the raw data, if you like to geek out on that stuff, yeah? You said people had problems with the term ADUs? Not problems. They just didn't know. So the slide specifically said that they didn't know if we need if 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 Summersworth actually needed that data or, or I'm sorry need, needed the the units or not. So they didn't know what the term was. Yeah, they weren't sure. Other than one apartment. Yeah, they weren't sure if you need if they needed them because maybe you know not either not knowing what an ADU was and we said accessory dwelling unit. Sorry, I like to use the acronym, but we said. We actually spelled out accessory dwelling unit. So they either don't know if you need them or they don't know what it is, or a combination of both. So it's it's a really an education. Yeah, I don't know. Using that term. Yeah. Do you feel like people know that term more? And maybe this was just kind of an anomaly? Yeah, you usually put them on, you pick them up over the garage or. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. In the apartment stuff yeah, like, like Fonzie. Fonzie lived in an ADU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Carriage house. Um, uh, granny flat has been another one, which I think, to your point, also assumes that you're going to have a, a relative in the house, so, or in the, the unit. So, agreed. Yeah. Did that answer your question, or did? Yeah, I'm just okay. saying, like, people around here, who, like in Durham, they probably know like a student apartment. Right. Everybody has one in there. How does that granny? A granny flat is also an accessory dwelling unit. So it's usually it's it's detached. Yeah, 
it's detached and it's usually in the back of the ha the unit or the back of the lot. <laughs> so part of the the you know the, we we specifically wrote the grant with the city to go hand in hand with the planning effort and listening to what the community thinks needs to happen and how we can actually look at your regulations to make it happen. And so the housing audit specifically will look at your zoning, your subdivision, your site plan regs, and anything else that's ancillary to that, that's supporting um, those, those regulations, to look at inconsistencies, is anything missing, is there anything outdated, which is important. I think you talked a little bit about the, uh, this, again, back to the sidewalks thing. <laughs> uh, that may be part of it or not. We're not, you know, I would assume it probably is because, you know, it is important, you know, as far as uh, smart growth and, you know, complete streets to have them. So, but luckily, you know, the, the result of that is, is really looking at recommendations. And so while we're not going to be writing those recommendations for you, we'll put, you know, we'll do a very methodic uh, report on what, need, what could be changed to help meet some of the things that we're hearing that, you're, that are your needs. Um, and that's both for growth, for new units, that's for infill, that could be for a variety of things, which is what I want to talk to you about tonight. So we'll, we'll go into that. So our approaches are four-pronged, and these can be done in a silo. These can be done, you know, in combination with each other. Um, they could be done just two or three. So, uh, but if, I think luckily with, for this, we're going to be doing a variety of all four of these for summer's worth. So your master plan, the, we actually looked at the housing chapter that's in existence right now as kind of our, you know, launching pad to the existing chapter. So we've already been looking at that. Looking at best practices, there's, a, there's some great toolboxes that have been developed throughout the state, one specifically that was launched in June with a variety of different recommendations, some of the, which you use, like conservation subdivisions and form-based code. So you're already using the right tools in the boxes. It's um, just maybe there might be a combination of others that could be used. And then uh, analysis, uh, that's kind of a given. And then the last is your zoning. So looking at those in, in tandem with each other so that it's almost like a crosswalk, if you will. If you've ever done a crosswalk analysis, it's similar to that. So those are the approaches that we will take. So what I wanted to do was just back up a little bit and I'll go get out of this um, and hopefully it will, of course not show, yep, there it is. And ask for some recommendations on where you think we should focus. So. You saw on the last slide here um, back in that there are four kind of buckets, if you will, that we could be analyzing. So I would love to know from the planning board's perspective where some of the focuses should be. Is it in certain areas of town? Is it some parts of your zoning ordinance? Again, go back to the sidewalks. <laughs> Is there an analysis that you specifically want us to look at? Like um, we talked about water and sewer um, in some instances. So open discussion definitely no right or wrong answers uh, or wrong answers I should say yeah so I guess for me one that I I hear I feel most as president and is ADUs and um, mixed income housing or not market rate housing, um, people get very, you know, up in arms about like, well, not near me and like, or density and traffic and, you know, there, so I think one of the things that, you know, the, I would love to see captured in this assessment is, you know, with community input, where does the community think that that can fit? And then obviously there's the data side of that where it's where do, do we have the infrastructure to also fit it? Um, Specifically uh, focusing on, you said mixed income, AD, or? Housing in general, right? But I think there, there are touch points that when you start talking about housing as a bucket, right? That they, it, if you're talking about, you know, market rate single family homes, it's a little less contentious. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about denser infill or ED, uh, ADUs or mixed income housing or multifamily housing, and it becomes a very contentious issue very quickly with the butters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's a couple of sites in town that people would kind of just say like, oh, that's a no brainer, like let's put housing there, like a vacant mill, for example. But uh, infill construction sites, 
things like that, it, mm -hmm. it's less clear where there is potential for consensus or at least uh, reasonable agreement on where it's best to put growth. Great. Did that capture what you said? Yeah, reasonably, yep. Okay. I'll throw out one here. Uh, again, feedback you hear from residents as you're about town or even in a more formalized setting. We, particularly in the downtown area here, uh, uh, you mentioned form-based codes. Uh, we have a historic overlay district. And there's at least a belief, and I don't know, uh, it seems reasonable that it could have conflicting messages, right? So you have form-based codes uh, and a historic overlay. Do those have head-on collisions on occasion, right? So I guess the, 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 the broad brush, what do we audit is, do our various overlay districts uh, compete with one another or do they complement one another? I guess is how I'd phrase that. Mm -hmm. I might add a specific thing to that. Um, if you're thinking about 79E, I can't remember if our 79E ordinance has a provision for additional opportunity for housing, but that would be one of the overlays that it would is be. It is as well. And yeah. In that same area. There's Correct, like yeah. So that would be another one to add to if we're thinking about strategies of where to put right. in incentivized growth. Kind of expanding out from overlay districts and form-based code conflicts. What do we have in our, our zoning and general ordinances that are hostile to the placement of housing? Um, I think we've got the same problem that a lot of communities that have longer spans of time on the books have in that we just going through and mucking out all of those connection points in our, our codes is a very difficult task. What are we behind the times on? What hasn't been updated? So, Angie, that was going to be my comment as well, is, is to, to, to review and look at the zoning and, and what improvements uh, we can make there to promote housing, housing of all types, you know, because that was another one of the discussion points at the workshop was, you know, what kind of housing do we want? or What kind of housing do we need, um, you know, from the four stories to the multifamily to single family, you know? being vibrant is having a mix of all of those too, you know. Yep. I would um, leave two the way it is, but I wouldn't include 79E there. That might be a separate item, and, and it's actually chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 31. We ha we've adopted part of the state RSA. We have a city ordinance chapter 31. Okay. I think what Paul might have been mentioning is I don't think we've incorporated um, the ability to give more forgiveness to tax relief based upon additional housing components. I, I think that's not in there yet, and we should look at right. whether we should I, I, put I it don't, in there. I don't, rec yeah, I don't recall, yeah. I don't think that's even in though there. I drafted it, I don't recall what, 17, what's, uh, what our 79E ordinance currently says. Uh, the I know that I think the state has updated it so that you can give additional relief now with affordable housing. Yeah. I don't think that wasn't in the original version no. we adopted. I don't know if it's been updated since then. I don't think it has. So it's one of those things that, um, it, you know, to me it, it is. But I think maybe it's, it's a separate item, but it is kind of a similar conversation. To incentivize more housing blocks. Can you give an example of what that would be? How that would look? The tax relief is uh, what three. Is, you, you, uh, 79E, I get it. But yeah, this, this, it's, it's chapter 31. It's not 79E. Okay. It's chapter 31. We base, we adopted part of the RSA. There's a new addition to the RSA that, that you, to get tax relief, you have to spend a certain amount of money or you have to uh, deal with historic components and that sort of thing. You can adopt, you can get relief. If you, if, if you don't meet the other criteria, you might, if you add workforce housing or whatever the language is in the RSA and incorporate that into the ordinance, then you can qualify for relief based upon new housing, okay. That's good. if that makes sense. I yeah, kind of babbled a little bit, but I apologize. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I would, uh, another one that comes to mind, and I had mentioned this earlier when just talking about our, having our CIP discussion with our forthcoming master planning efforts, and I trust me, it pains me to say this, but it is just a reality that we live in is I think parking is 
part of the equation as much as I would love for alternative transportations to be a meaningful part of uh, the equation of how people get around. It is like unlikely to be the dominant case for a very long time in this environment. So thinking about how do we, what are reasonable parking requirements for modern day housing needs? You know, I, what, are, what are strategies to make that easier to do? Parking resources, I don't, you know, I don't know what goes into the, you know, what scope is reasonable here, but I, it, it drives many projects. Yeah, and it goes beyond housing. It's, it's a conversation, you know, in the urban core uh, where you have housing competing for the same spots as businesses. Uh, some businesses which may need to have a car parked in front of them for 90 minutes and others which need to have a car parked in front of them for two while they go in and pick up their pizza and run. So it's competing parking interest uh, as well as capacity, I think. And this is more of an internal question, but it, it, I haven't heard any conversation on affordability uh, like for if 7090 if were revised to include uh, additional benefit for an affordability component then is there do we have any existing language that would help guide someone in doing that in terms of the amount how many what percent or would that be on a case-by-case -case negotiation I don't know I'm just wondering I'm wondering if that's like should be part of this and making recommendations what what that would look like do you mean inclusionary zoning paul yeah yeah okay yes. yeah we don't have that in our ordinance right now in our correct no yeah. i know but i'm just saying if if that is something that is ever put into the 79e then it, is that a negotiation on a case-by-case -case, or is that is there would there be a standard for that it's a question i think there's a standard yeah. per the 79e for the housing opportunity zone Um, something that comes to mind for me because I'm looking more at one right and you know looking at other communities that have had successful projects I think of Dover right you guys know the, the development behind Patty B's um, it's a beautiful place if you guys haven't been back there it's mixed use so down on the ground there are all these wonderful stores and up above is living right so you know I wonder if there's the ability, if we could find a new place, find a find an open track and try and create a community, create create a neighborhood. I don't know if those those places in town exist, uh, but we should be using the successes of our neighbors and following their methods because they are working. Um, and I would certainly use that development as something to emulate. Are we doing enough to encourage mixed use development? Mm -hmm. And if we're not, what can we do to help it along? Because that's a great example. And that's exactly what the best practice section is for. So thank you for that. Angie, one, one of the things that has impressed me is that overlay map of what is available, what land is available in Summersworth to build on. Mm -hmm. Then you subtract where sewer and water aren't. Then you subtract where wetlands are. Mm -hmm. Then you subtract other components and really how much, how little area there is for a building. And, and one that's, that, that's noticeable is the Main Street up to the Rollinsford line. And that, that yeah, that, that, that came up in our housing meeting and, and you know, what what people would expect to see out in that area so people are aware mm -hmm. that, that that part is being considered but they're wondering what kind of buildings are going to be there yep and whether it's going to be housing or commercial and all that kind of stuff you know you bring up a good point mark you know the the reality is that that corridor it's difficult because when you're dealing with folks that don't want to participate or they don't share the general vision of what the city is looking to achieve, um, be it for personal reasons or whatever, um, we're, we're, hand, we're, we're handcuffed. There's nothing that we can do in that corridor. And I don't know what 
what the city can do to incentivize the landlords in particularly favorable parts of town that we want to develop. Um, I think that's worth a conversation in its own right. Because that, that to, to Mark's point, there's a whole strip of buildings there that we just can't touch. You're talking about Route 101? Sorry, right, right, right down here, right on, right on Main Street. On Main Street. Sure. I think uh, Mark's talking about the, talking like, about the equestrian center area, like that kind of more greenfield area. If you look at the suitability analysis they did of where it's developable, oh, developable yeah, that's land green, is. Green Street. Got it. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's down, down, in, down in my neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also, uh, also, you know, we also talk about the Alclara building and, you know, whatever, whatever we need to do to help developers get in there and get started. I know I look over to you, uh, well, to you, Paul, from Chimburg. And then nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Uh, but, you know, that would be. Can you say it again? Which one? Sorry. For, for Alclara. For, for, yeah, for the, the GE building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big, the big one right there. You know, that would be a wonderful place to, to really take that mixed use um, mentality. Well, I was just going to mention that. I mean, it, yeah, I'm, I'm all for this, but, but just realize a reality check, often have to be the bad guy. It, just because we change it doesn't mean they'll come. Um, we did the city did a study which still befuddles me some 30 years ago hired a, uh, a uh, Consultants to look at the Garabedian property on, on mixed-use development came up with this big plan oh. But they've been sitting on that vacant property. It's old racetrack on off Route 108 um, And and they didn't buy into the plan. They haven't really made an earnest effort from my perspective to sell it um so, I mean, that's another large track of land that could be developed into mixed use, like behind Patty B's, where they have uh, condos and I think an el maybe elderly now, single family homes, et cetera, et cetera. Because I have, I have very good friends who live back there. And they have a nice restaurant, Roost, if you're interested. <laughs> Which consultant was that? It, it is. It's a neighborhood. Yeah. yeah it's years ago. And it's beautiful, right? I mean, it's it's really embraces form-based codes right down to the T, right? You know, I think this is woven into several of the bullet points that you've mm -hmm. developed up here already. It's funny, some of them surfaced during our discussion of our capital improvements plan earlier, ever so briefly. But here's the bottom line. Summersworth is... Uh, roughly 10 square miles. So geographically, we are small. Um, at one point in time, and I don't know if, the, if it's still true, we were considered the third most densely compact community in the state. Uh, so I don't know if we're still third, but we're still probably pretty densely compact compared to a lot of places, which says that the opportunities to incentivize growth and uh, develop uh, available properties are pretty narrow and pretty limited, right? So to that end, do, do we have to rethink regulations which are up here that uh, get in the way of that, right? So um, in our ordinances and site plan regulations, there are restrictions on height. Um, do we need to relax those? Where we can't go out because of our 10 square miles, can we go up? And if so, where, right? Because then that goes into, well, I like that idea, but not in my backyard, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's this dance among all of these things that we're in. Yep. No, you did, that, the, the height restrictions piece, yeah, absolutely. Under, Can we go up? Under, <laughs> under eight. You started some of that now, though, Dave, by introducing what you're going to introduce Monday night with maybe some tweaking a little bit of. That's not the height restriction, no. though. I would just change it. It's not a site plan. It's potential development uses. Oh, I apologize. It's, it's, it'll throw people off if you say site plan, Sorry. I think. But thank you. Sure. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> Any others? And we'll we're still going to do a big you know a big flush, um, but we wanted to make sure we were on the right path. If there were any focal points that we could be looking at, one la one last la one last one, Angie. One last yeah, sure. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I, so I, going back to infill, though, you know, down here on Main Street, always used to be a, from what I'm told, used to be a row of 
different shops and stuff like that, you know? So maybe looking at that and what potential reuse is on Main Street, where would they, uh, what was that called uh, back in the 80s? When they Urban Renewal. Urban Renewal came through, yeah. Mm -hmm. 60s okay I, I can't correct and and if it, people have any other ideas feel free to email them to me and I can get them to Angie yes. after this meeting Absolutely. Well, it, that, what, what, what you're also talking about there is what incentives do we provide to people to renovate and those buildings down there are a perfect example of who's gonna put up the money to renovate that one particular building um, and, and what can, what incentive can we provide to people to do that? And that's where you know whether it's a tax kind of kind of relief for a period of time or whatever. I don't know. That's uh, chapter thirty one, based off of seventy nine e. Right. It's there. It's just a matter of uh, the land. I think you're talking about sort of the block on Main Street. Yeah. It's a matter of people don't want to sell or, or right. uh, tag an outrageous number on it. I, I know we want to move on, but I did just think of one that I think is merits putting down. It, it might be um, thinking about the role of the housing authority, which is its own entity, but um, certainly plays a large role in providing uh, our, uh, some of our affordable housing needs here in town and has historically played a large and controversial role in redevelopment. All right. Yes, so please, if you have others, uh, this will be our next big <coughs> effort as far as this project. So our next steps, if you are curious, so we're still with you until like February-ish <laughs> timeframe, but we are working on the master plan draft. So we're working on the uh, pulling everything together, the narrative, all of those, the, uh, the data that we have that we collected for this. Um, and then we will be doing some interviews with stakeholders as part of the audit process and developing a task force. So some of those folks have been identified, but we're always curious if there are folks that would like to sit on that. And um, Jason, to your um, uh, report about the 2030 cam uh, effort cam committee, 2030 committee, 2030, yep. it'd be great if you or someone from that could potentially sit on that. It'd be great to just hear the vision and if there's anything housing related, but it sounds like there haven't been any updates lately. So. We'd love to. Uh, yeah, we, we've been a high. Uh, we've been on hiatus for about six months. Oh, okay. So uh, we're we're coming back to session next week. Great. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Awesome. So we'd love any feedback. And then you know, as absolutely. far as the interviews, definitely looking at developers, and we have some recommendations from um, both of our commissioners as well as from the planning staff. And we'll obviously get approval for those things. We're not just going to get out there and start talking to people. Uh, but we definitely want to make sure that we're asking you know point blank questions uh, of folks, especially developers. So. And then uh, lastly, we'll conduct the audit and there'll be a report um, that, that with our findings and recommendations for where to tweak the ordinances and regulations and anything else. And actually the point about the general audit, um, you're sorry, the general ordinance is really good too. So thank you for that because it's not just about zoning all the time. Sometimes there are tweaks to the general ordinance that need to be made too. So not to add more to our plate, but it's important to look at it all as a big picture. Any questions for me? I'll just uh, close by saying uh, thanks for everything you do. Uh, the uh, the work that Stratford Regional Planning Commission does is um, quite profound, and uh, you guys really drive down into the details and, and really provide a lot of information that's beneficial. So thank you. Good. You're welcome. We love doing it. <laughs> no, I so think feel free general to comment, you know, I think the timing of this couldn't be more important. Uh, I, I think we're at an interesting position in the city. Uh, I mean, there, there have been, of late, we've had some, some conflict around housing, so that suggests that things are not quite aligned, right? Uh, and not just in one place, right? In several spots, right? Um, there are issues around uh, the need for housing, as has been identified in the survey, uh, the potential for regional growth with lack of housing and lack of workers. I mean, this is just a bunch of, roads coming to this major intersection and without a traffic light we're going to have a collision so we got to we got to do something so timing is perfect here yeah. great well thank you for allowing me time i don't know what the final is but i was hoping i stayed under 45 minutes and i did it's 35.
job. <laughs> so thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I know you have other things on your agenda tonight. And thank uh, you. I look forward to hopefully seeing many of you again in the near future. I know I'll see at least a couple of you, but again, as we progress into this project. Thank um, you. I'd love to see you more. Director Mears, is there any other new business that may come before the board? Uh, none this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item 5, workshop business. Item A, revision of site plan review regulations, section 13.1, assurances for completion and maintenance of improvements. Director Mears. Uh, yes, so this is just uh, for a simple revision in the site plan uh, regulations to allow for um, a bond. Uh, you should have all seen it in my memo. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get this uh, uh, aligned with the subdivision regulations and hold a public hearing at our next meeting for this change. I'll make that motion to schedule a public hearing at our next meeting for Second. this change. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Witham. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Communications and miscellaneous. for a uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Okay. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Abias. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you.